As you might remember, proteins can be both polar and nonpolar. This is extremely important when they are involved in a membrane because it means part of the protein can be embedded in the nonpolar membrane and part of the protein can be found outside of the membrane. So now, what if you have a particular chain of amino acids, each of them being something different, polar or nonpolar, could you tell what it might look like in a membrane? The answer is yes. So for instance, if I make a membrane with my lipid bilayer, my polar heads to the outside, my nonpolar tails to the inside, then we know that nonpolar things would go inside, polar things would go outside. So now how do we tell which one is which? Well, we have to use an amino acid chart that explains it to us. You can typically find amino acid chart fairly easily either in your textbook or online, or I think there's one on Blackboard that you can look up. So if I go to my amino acid chart, I can see that my first amino acid is glycine, G-L-Y, and glycine is a nonpolar. So since I know that, I know that that part of it would be here inside of the membrane. The next one after that is valine, so that'd be another part that would be inside, followed by another valine. So now we have three that are inside of the membrane. The next amino acid after that is listed as proline. Now proline is a polar group, so it's more likely to be found on the outside of the membrane than on the inside where the water is now. The next one after that is lysine, which is a charged group, so it's definitely on the outside. And that is followed by arginine, another charged group. After that, the ILE stands for isoleucine. Isoleucine is another nonpolar group, so it goes back to the inside. Followed by leucine, which is also a nonpolar group, and followed again by glycine. So this protein has two parts on the inside and one part on the outside. If I was drawing it as a blob, I might draw something like this with the outer ends on the inside and the part on the outside sticking out. Now this protein doesn't go all the way through the membrane, but it does stick in the membrane, so it might have a function such as enzymatic or communication where it relates to other cells. Now, let's look at a longer one. This protein chain starts off with some that we're already familiar with. VAL is valine, that would be nonpolar on the inside. GLY is glycine, also nonpolar on the inside. PHE is phenylalanine. It's a little bit funkier, but it's also a nonpolar group. So here's our nonpolar section stuck on the inside. Next it goes to GLU, which is glutamine. Now that's polar, so it's going to be on the outside. GLN is the one that we use for glutamine, so it's also on the outside because it is also charged, which makes it polar. Lysine is on the outside because it is charged. And phenylalanine, again, goes back to the inside. So now we've had a section on the inside and a section on the outside. We have another glycine, so that could be on the inside, followed by histidine, which is positively charged. Maybe this time we'll come across the membrane. And we'll put the histidine on the other side. So now you can see how a protein might go across a membrane. After that is serine, which is polar, followed by another polar serine, and followed by ASN, which is the aspartate, also polar and charged. The last three in this sequence are valine, leucine, and isoleucine, and at this point you may recognize those as three that would go back to the inside anchoring the protein in. So now this protein has a section on the inside, a section on the outside, 
another section on the outside and a section on the inside. So maybe its blob is something more like this, where it goes back and forth across. Now you could see how it could create some kind of internal system where it can cross the membrane with the nonpolar parts and maybe even drag something along the inside to get it out again. Let's do one more, and this one is the longest of the three, just to see some of the different possibilities. Okay, I made my membrane extra big and extra thick for this one so we could keep track of it. It starts again with the nonpolars. So it starts with valine on the inside and then leucine, the LEU, but then TYR is a new one. So we look it up and it is tyrosine, another kind of funky but nonpolar one. Next up is arginine. So now we have our first polar one that goes outside, followed by lysine and another lysine. The one after that, TRP, is tryptophan. Tryptophan moves us back inside where it's nonpolar and then is right next to methionine, which is another one that is fairly definitively nonpolar. These two meet up with histidine, so we want to, we could say, we go all the way across to where we're back to the charged ones, histidine followed by a histidine, and then a proline, which is another polar one. The proline is followed by valine, so we go back inside. So we have our val followed by our glycine, and in this case, jumps to an aspartate, which is polar on the outside. GLU glutamate, also polar, and GLN which is the glutamine, also polar. After that, we come across the phenylalanine. It's going to bring us back to the inside and another valine. And that is the end of this process. So now you can see that this protein goes back and forth across the membrane multiple times and has a bunch of charged amino acids that could bring something like an ion across with it. So again, if I was going to draw this sort of as a blob, and I think this time I'll make a smaller membrane for myself so you could see what the protein might look like, I would say, well, part of it here is inside, and then part of it is outside, but then part of it is inside again and outside again, but then outside and inside. So maybe it's got some pieces like this. Now it's starting to look more like a channel or a protein that would transport something linked into the membrane and pull it, for instance, all the way across. So those are the examples of how different amino acids give different polarity to proteins so they might sit into a membrane. Now, if you were given an amino acid, you could look up any one of these and say whether that amino acid would be inside the membrane or outside the membrane.